Dr. Canfield, let's start with you. Just how prevalent are these prostate cancer numbers? Prostate cancer is the number one solid organ cancer in men. Approximately one out of every nine men will have to face this diagnosis wow. in their life. That translates to about 165,000 men every year, and about 30,000 of those men will die of prostate cancer, even now. And most men are over the age of 65 who are diagnosed, but Frank is an exception, obviously. You're, what, 40? 40, <laughs> so it happens in younger men, right? Absolutely. The average age is around 65, which means that half of men will be younger than that. And as we just heard Frank saying, too, he didn't have any symptoms. He just thought, oh, I need a physical. I need to see what's going on. Here's your soapbox. The biggest thing is for, for men to do is that get the blood work done? Absolutely. There's been a lot of controversy about PSA screening, which is our main blood test and main way that we diagnose prostate cancer. Really, the controversy has been about the inaccurate use of PSA or the inaccurate uh, subsequent uh, testing and then what happens to men after they're diagnosed. So what we call early or, or um, advanced um, findings um, and, and over-aggressive treatments, let's put, it, let's put it that way. What's most important is that we do find it early. W the one thing that we know that uh, treating men who are, let's say, 65 and younger and have a long life expectancy those are the men that we can benefit. Those are the men who have been proven in studies intervention will save their lives. And what about just a rectal exam, though? Because there's, I feel like there's, there are different Nothing. opinions. Nothing. Because like, there's four of them, and nobody can find a nodule. So you were doing that, Andy? Yeah, right? nobody, nobody found anything. So the blood test really is the key. Right. There's never been any controversy over the, the rectal exam. It's still part of the findings and follow-up. It will diagnose cancer at a later stage, however. More advanced cancer. So we miss an opportunity, perhaps, to find earlier cancer that we can do something early about. David Jordan, okay, let's chat with you about this technology because sure. this is really super interesting. And I understand this has been uh, used in, in animals successfully, but now, as Frank mentioned, he's patient number three. Describe to us, <laughs> number three, describe to us exactly how this all goes down. And we have a little animation that accompanies this as well. Sure, let's see it. It all breaks down to the gold particles that are very, very tiny. It does. And so uh, this is technology locally out of Rice University. Um, um, Frank mentioned earlier Dr. Hallis. And so this is a silica core with a gold shell on it infused into the body. And we really rely only on tumor biology, the natural tumor biology. This, the particles are so small that they catch up and get caught, if you will, in what's called the leaky vasculature of solid tumors. They don't, they don't have well-formed epithelialization and so forth. And so they catch there, and then the day after that infusion, in Frank's case, here later in the month, we will come in with a light source, a laser, right into the proximity of where that tumor is, light it up with a with a small amount of power as it turns out and it's the gold that transduces into heat sufficient to kill those cancer cells and, and it, what's so wow. amazing about this i mean I, I it's hard to believe that this is even happening when you look at the animation and mm. this is where years and years of research has gone correct but it's that type of technology is truly leaving all of the other organs and tissues and everything else around the good cells and not affecting that because that's sort of what happens with other kinds of treatments, the other things kind of get damaged, right? Absolutely. I'll still have my prostate. You will still have it. I'll still have it. Exactly. Yes. That's important. It is. Uh, yes. Because that ultra-focal aspect of the technology, the, the, the sparing of healthy tissue in a gland such as the prostate, which has got other important functions that, uh, that men would like to preserve, then if you can leave them alone and be ultra focal and really just treat the disease on a localized basis, then that's our, that's our premise. It's a game changer. It really is. And we saw in that animation within three to seven days, the body, that dead tissue is just sort of carried out through the lymphatic system, it I really guess. Really kind of as soon as you ablate it. Correct. Uh, you know, prostate cancer therapies have been evolving over the last few decades, and our mainstays of treatment are radical. They're radical removal of the whole prostate or radiation that treats the whole prostate. Yeah. And while that can get rid of cancer very effectively, it can cause a lot of damage to the surrounding tissues and have a huge impact on a man's quality of life. So over time, these things have gotten better. Radiation is more precise. Surgery, even with robotics, for example, is much more precise. But we haven't been able to get to the point where we can just get the cancer cells and leave everything else alone until now. And we're just about out of time, guys, but I think it's worth underscoring that with this type of treatment, a lot of times if someone's diagnosed with prostate cancer, it's, oh, it's so slow growing, we'll just sort of wait and see its progress. With this technology, 
you're able to zap it, get rid of it, without worrying about it slowly growing in your body over the years, right? It's a great point. We yeah. put a lot of men on active surveillance. If they have low-risk cancer, it may or may not change, and we follow that aggressively. This is a way to remove that and perhaps remove the anxiety and the need for so many frequent follow-ups and testing and all of that. Just get rid of it. Nip it in but the But you got to find out. You have to get tested. You have to get tested. Yeah. And Frank, your surgery is scheduled or uh, the procedure is The procedure is the 28th. We'll infuse the nanoparticles the 27th on a Tuesday. I'll have that on the 28th and then go back for the MRI in the next couple of days to make sure it worked. All right, patient number three, we're rooting number for three. you. Love it. <laughs> David Jordan, Dr. Canfield, thank you so much for stopping by. Frank, please stop by again with an update when you can. Yes, I'll do it. All right, thank you. great to see thank you guys. You.